Welcome back everyone to Let's Play World of Waves 2 as Japan, episode number 450? Oh my gosh, is it episode 50? I think it is, but I'm not going to check, I'll just plow on. So we had an interesting turn of events last time, we know that the war is going to be uh, redeclared. First of all, we finished that long fleet battle, and we had a mess of it because of the, the game bug issue. Oh man, that was a pain in the bum. Spent a long time trying to fix that, too. Uh, anyways, coming back into it, uh, we had to deal with a, a peace. The British did their usual dirty politics, and they, they just as we had a huge victory, and had, like what was it, like 45,000 or so victory points to 2,000? Something like that. Maybe it was 40 to 2,000. So, it, you know, this is looking at a 20 to 1 ratio, or you can look at it from a raw point perspective that we were 38,000 victory points ahead. By either metric, that's a pretty substantial lead. And yet, Russia mediated a white peace. Yeah, well, we're not going to stand for it this time. If, um, the problem is that the British haven't really moved forces out of this area, and I don't think we'll be able to get a surprise attack. So what we're hoping to do, and what we've already kind of started to do, is um, start to push um oh we're we're keeping all our crew at maximum readiness and we're trying to we're just hoping that the british are going to send some of their troops ships sailors onto a lower readiness status to save money and then hopefully we can take advantage of that also i guess we have an opportunity i didn't think about this but we have an opportunity to increase i don't really think an air base yeah, I mean, invasion range is 600 nautical miles. That's got to be the, surely it's the much further than the extent of our bomber range right now, which is probably at 400. That does remind me, though, that we can take a look at what kind of aircraft we have. <clears throat> yeah. We do have, our medium armor does have a range, but yeah, okay. So have we even put medium bombers on places? I think we're doing 20... 20, what what is our what is our base strategy right now? It just showed me it. Twenty torpedo bombers, twenty medium bombers, and twenty flying boats. That seems right. I have to say I'm not going to contest that. I'm, I'm going to leave that as is. So that's our template, and you know what I? Uh, seems like it's still the best one. We do have one more aircraft carrier available for the next upcoming war. We'll let that one keep working up. Um, I don't know how much time I have today, so we'll try to just cut this, you know, plow through this episode quickly. And see, because I do have a cutoff in uh, 30 minutes from now. So this will be a shorter, shorter episode. Or maybe I'll just two-part it. I hate doing that, but that might be the, what I have to do. Okay, um, a lot of money, but we know that that's all going to go into building our next ship, our last battleship. We'll allow it. Yeah, the main thing is we want aircraft. We, I mean, I wish, it doesn't make sense for the naval side of things to be influencing the aircraft development. Well, not necessarily, I guess it could, but... That's what we would do. We'd like to funnel money into air, like aeronautical advancing, advancements, if we could. Maybe that's already kind of abstracted under the hood. I don't know how aircraft development works. I guess it's based on a year and just random diet. But is it based on like how many carriers you have and how many aircraft you already have in play? Would that influence things? Let me think. Who were the best aircraft developers? I mean, there's. The nations, I don't know, they're not, even the Italians had some good aircraft. I don't know too much about the French aircraft. Um, I guess it comes down to production more than to design. Well, the Americans just had a lot of designs. Anyway, while I'm just sitting here and think about things. They want to buy naval aviation heavier than air. Okay, aircraft catapult. I don't really have much to fear from the... Oh, okay, quality. That's that's actually nice. 
Quality one five inch guns. I don't have much to fear from the Russians, so we'll let them take that technology. We get a small kickback for it, obviously. I'm not seeing how we're actually going to finance the next... Uh... <laughs> what? How many submarines do we have? Only 43? I'm not seeing how we're going to finance the next set of battleships. I think I'm going to spend that money on submarines instead, because <clears throat> we know how potent submarines are against the British. Now, that said, I actually want to also build some destroyers. How are we doing? Let's just look at the almanac. We're at 721, so it's still 4 to 1 odds in capital ships. It's 1 to 2 in my favor, or really 1 to 3 if you look at tonnage, um, in my favor for carriers. And then light carriers 3 to 2. We have five, I mean, it's infinite ratio, right? So five heavy cruisers to zero on their part, but I guess two or three of these are my heavy light cruisers. They might as well be called light cruisers. They have 15 light cruisers. And then we're about two to one on destroyers. So yeah, I mean, the, the area we have most fallen behind in terms of tonnage is uh, the capital ship one, but I actually don't think that's that bad of a thing because we don't lose capital ships very often. And there's a limit on the number of capital ships you can bring into engagement anyway. We don't really need that many capital ships because we're so focused on three sea zones, which should be the exact state of affairs right now. We have, oh, okay. We have the Gachamuchis, and I don't think I like this. I think we're gonna wanna shift the Gachamuchis. Uh, nope, they're all the same speed. Let's just keep them all in the Southeast Asia, and then we'll do an invasion as quickly as possible. All we want is a holding force to try to stave off invasion um, in the South Pacific, and that's what the aircraft base here is for. Let's also go back over and see if we can improve these bases yet. We can. Okay, so let's expand all aircraft, all air bases, and we'll throw on... It's actually a good question. What do we want to throw on? So, Corsica, Highway. So, th let me look at this Northeast Asia. So, this to here, this is all. We have three air bases. That's good. Okay, that's actually really good. I'm very happy about that. We have three air bases in Southeast Asia. Also seems very reasonable. And then we have one in the South Pacific. That's a. I, God, I have to say, that seems like a very sensible distribution. We probably don't. I mean, honestly, we. We probably don't need, what is the airbase we have? I think it's the Way Highway. It's weird, but it does control a lot of area. I mean, we could get into, I think that most of our engagements have happened up Korsakov and Hakodate. Those are the two we have. Please tell me those are the two we have. We have Way Highway and then Korsakov and Hakodate, yeah. So that, that makes perfect sense. And we have had almost no action, almost no naval action. I, I don't even know what would be the catalyst for naval action over, and is this the Yellow Sea? I forget, or is this the Yellow Sea? I think this is the Yellow Sea. So anyways, the bay, the body of water between Korea and China, I don't think we've had any battles over here. The closest thing we have is we do get a lot in this area. So. I might want to change, I, I think what I should do is uh, put a naval base on Sasebo <clears throat> or Fusan, which would be more appropriate. I'm starting to think, what, where would, how do we cover the most amount of area? We've had some battles south of here as well. I, my gut feeling is Sasebo. So let's go ahead and let's put the base on Sasebo. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just build it up. And then we'll, we'll just move the squadron directly. And that means I'm going to move the way high bit, um, air, all the air assets over to Sasebo. Like the only, only time when this would be an important issue is if we were to fight, if we were to have a chance of taking North Korea, if somebody else was taking Northern Korea, but I don't see that happening. Yeah, and we just haven't had any battles in this area. Sabo will cover a lot better of an area because we've had a lot more battles in that area. Okay, this is just brainstorming. I mean, thinking out loud. I could be wrong. It may happen, in fact. <laughs> Murphy's Law, right? 
that we switch the aircraft base and then we get battles up and then if that is the yellow sea whatever area that is we might get some battles up there just to spite me I mean look at the, how the diplomats my Japanese diplomats have failed me for for the last time not for the last time I, I that's the sad thing <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're gonna fail me again but we'll keep going we'll keep at it so is it time for that war uh, is it time for that war yet they want to buy more stuff. Well, sure. Go ahead, I guess. Bulbous bow reduces engine horsepower requirements. Hey. It means we're going to have to redesign this ship in one more month. But is it time? I Gosh, I feel like it's time. I'm going to save, cut, go. And we're back. I loaded back in and... Set the tension to 13. So, war. <laughs> Who's ready for some war? Me. I am. Let's do this. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and buy it. Okay, dive bomb report. Yeah, so I feel like um, if you were delivering news to the Secretary of the Navy... Um, yes, uh, so... Uh, we finished, we have a, those prototypes have finished. Uh, yes, um, there was some movement of the fleet from here to there. We are looking into some new technologies. Oh, by the way, yes, and uh, war was declared. <laughs> kind of a weird way of feeding us the news here. The most important thing they leave us waiting for. Now, these are substantially better. It's This one is my favorite so far. Range is not usually the limiting factor. I don't see... Okay, so the bottom one is the best from a stand from the combat stats. It's a bit slower. It's also slightly, very, very slightly shorter range. I might like it though. You know, I actually think I do, because it. Okay, speed is maximum speed is also a combat stat, a very important one. I think this is going to be fine. So, 120 versus 116. Well, I mean, I don't like, I, I like to, when things are strictly better, that makes me feel better. But still, because this would be actually a reduction in range, slightly. Although, you know. I wish I knew the reliability. I mean, I wish that there was some indication of reliability. Like, hey, we're building this. I mean, if you were to prioritize that, you would maybe say, hey, how sturdy is this thing? Shouldn't toughness, in some sense, be a... No, because that'd be like armor and stuff. That's not reliability. Yeah. I mean, there can be some... I, I don't know how toughness and reliability are used in this game. You could have things like a, you know, a rough landing might be where toughness and reliability are correlated. Or not just correlated, but just related. Simply related. Um, yeah, I'm still leaning towards this bottom one. Okay. People have been catching the little mistakes I've been making on these, which makes me a little bit more nervous to pick one over the other. But, I, th man, I I do feel like speed is extremely important. Not a, not just the combat, but actually even just the cruise speed, going that little bit faster, getting to the target a little bit quicker. But those combat sets are just too good to pass up, and we have had our our um, dive bombers eaten up by the British in the last one. Okay, so we want to rework this design. should immediately give us a little bit of tonnage. That was not as much as I was expecting, actually. Um, interestingly enough, we could go down to 5-inch guns. We can't make them dual purpose. Oh, but wait. Oh, we only have, we don't have, okay, that's interesting. Oh, God, I can't close out of the screen, so I have to just remember all the changes I'm making. Don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Triples. 100. Is this the same? I don't know. 101? Was it 101? I thought it was 100. But, yeah, we do want to make any changes. You know, this is so interesting, this 433. I, I gotta say... I'm a big fan of symmetry. I'm a really big fan of symmetry, but I like this. I don't know why. The, to me, the goofiest thing is the way the turrets themselves look. 
I think that's the reason why I don't even like the triples. I just don't like this rounded design. Like, uh, it doesn't, to me, look... It doesn't look as nice. It's like the, the thickness of the guns or something. And, like, even though these are the same 17-inch guns, they're thinner barrels. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But that's not what this is about, anyway. So, yeah, that's expensive. Oh, my gosh. We would get a 1,000 tons back. Um, I am actually going to pause. I, I think I actually need to pause. Oh, shoot. My recording software. I can tell that I've loaded a game which messed with my recording setup. It's, I'm speaking way too loud. Good thing I looked over and checked the the meter. Yeah, so this is interesting. I can I'm thinking about making my fast battleship. Is it I thought is twenty eight the minimum for a fast battleship though? Or is it twenty six? Okay, I don't remember. I'm gonna leave it at twenty eight because like if we spent all the time getting this to where it is, it is still really good design. A hundred tons. I guess that gives me room for <laughs> uh, never mind <laughs> I don't know what it does oh yeah it does get well it gives me a little bit of room for AA stuff it gives me an a, a room for AA director okay that's actually that's actually important and we can squeeze on a couple more exactly a couple more medium anti-aircraft guns 91 tons I think I can live with that Okay, so if we don't go with this, we could just go up to, no, you know what? I honestly think anti, what, I mean, okay, let's think. Nine or eight, eight or nine, six inch guns. Yeah, I just don't think these things are gonna be fighting destroyers, are they? It does also give me the extra gun, <laughs> which is nice for its own reasons. Not having the odd number of... Yeah. No, oh, I'm torn. I am torn. Um, do I need the... So these will make... This will make them better at escorting actually because they'll have more destroyer killing capability okay we'll do this oh okay it's easier to drop guns later i was thinking these can be upgrade down up down whatever whenever we want but the a director is to have space room available i'll probably end up dropping this back down anyway I mean, the design does look like, if I zoom out a little bit, it does look a little bit more complete with the guns on the back, right? <clears throat> okay, let's do it this way. Just, I'm appealing, I'm just... We'll find room for that weight. Maybe I can make the conning tower 8 inches. We already saw the 6 inch guns, basically. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make the conning tower 8 inches. Our lowest conning tower armor yet. Which basically means if it gets hit by, if it gets hit by a big gun... It's not going to live, <laughs> but if it, hits, if it gets hit by anything other than, this is what, I mean, what's the penetration? So we, we really think we're being too clever here, um, but trying to lower the conning tower, but I think it is clever. And let's take a look at what will actually penetrate this. So 10 inch guns, quality one 10 inch guns will penetrate this Hmm, from 11,000 yards and less. And having the 9 actually would raise that to only 10,000? Yeah, so this will be penetrated anything less than 11,000, but um, the 8 inch, or the 9 inch will be penetrated at ni around 9,000. So it's about 2,000 yards we gain. Um, we'd have to take it up to basically 10 inches of conning tower armor if we wanted to be protected against anything that wasn't point blank. I don't think we have to worry about that because we're I'm trying to think of the use case here. When would we be, we're not going to face semi dreadnoughts with like 10 inch secondaries. Obviously we're going to encounter heavy cruisers eventually, but I think that those are mostly going to be at eight inch guns 
Let's go down, let's just actually consider eight inch guns for a little bit. If we were to consider eight inch guns, our eight inch conning tower, eight inches of armor on our conning tower is gonna stop everything up to 9,000 yards. Now yet 9,000 yards is pretty close range for fighting heavy cruisers. We could definitely be within that range. So eight inch guns could definitely be hitting our uh, conning tower at this range. Um, it's just such a low probability. And then of course the last thing we wanna check, the most important thing is really that the conning tower is protected against six inch guns and it completely is which is, uh, that's that's to me the important thing is making sure you have at least that. So let's just kind of browse our higher caliber guns. 14 quality zero, 15 quality one, 16 quality zero, 17 quality zero. So I like the 17s because they will be eventually quality one. I mean, I hope, knock on wood, do, do, do. But I think that it's, uh, it's in my opinion, it's the best bang for your buck. The bigger, the better, I think, is uh, generally, because the rate of fire, there's this ongoing discussion about whether or not rate of fire has an effect. It's supposed to, that the game actually limits rate of fire above four. Uh, it's pretty interesting to think that that's the case, but again, I don't really know how they're doing things, so maybe that's not an inaccurate assessment of the situation, or I don't know, really don't know. So the results in the game don't seem that terrible. Whatever their system is, it feels okay. Uh, okay, so we'll go with this. This will save us basically 50 tons. And yeah, we'll redo this design. It's only a 10% change, which is good. Uh, what in the end did we do? We basically upped the secondary and AA positions at the cost of one inch of conning tower and better engines. But that seems all fine to me. Rework that. Yeah, only one month, 800 money, that's fine. So we're at war. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're at war. Um, that's also something interesting, being at war. Our ships are pretty much where I want them to be. The Ashigara is guarding our carriers, if I'm not mistaken, the tsunamis. Um, you can move down to join your brethren. And having four aircraft carriers in that area, honestly, I think is enough. It makes me... Okay, the tsunamis are extremely fast. I, was, I For a second in my head, I was... Well, the natural way it should be is that the tsunamis would be slower than the newer carriers. But no, the newer carriers were slower. Um, yeah, so that in that case... Ooh, yeah, we do have our light carriers... They're a bit vulnerable down in the South Pacific, but that's, gosh, you know what? That's where they're gonna stay for now. Let's get trade production going on. And if I'm not mistaken, we actually want some of our heavy cruisers in, oh, just normal cruisers to also become trade protectors here, just to protect raiding in Northeast Asia. And I think the Myobus are actually gonna do trade protection at 25 knots, they're good escorts for the light carriers, but just not good escorts for my Kaigagurus, Kaigarius. So I think we'll do trade protection here. And that should stop raiding in those areas. We probably could consider doing some raiding ourselves. Maybe cycling the Ashigaras in that role? That is one thing I think that the a true heavy cruiser like the Ashigara is good at. I mean, we did build this thing to run away at 30 knots, so we could do trade protect, I mean, raiding, and if we encounter battleships, we can just run away from them. It's like a really good idea in my opinion, but we don't want to do that right now since we need the points to stop invasions. And speaking of invasions, the money that we are currently saving, we'll just push right into an invasion of Hong Kong. Hopefully it happens this time. Next turn. Enemy coastal raid. Well, it's an enemy coastal raid. I'm going to accept because they're raiding near our aircraft. No, I'll I'll accept anyway. Let's do this. Oh, we don't have any good ships. 
Oh. Got some patrol boats, some actual corvettes. Merchant ships. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing. We just have our two. Well, that's a lot less appealing <laughs> from a battle standpoint, but it's just the first one. Our focus is going to be to stay healthy. <laughs> Okay, it's almost nighttime, which is going to make this one even worse. Oh, what the heck? Okay. I don't know if we had a spotting report. This person just appeared, but there they are, without notification. <laughs> so let's get the, the screen to go to support. Line ahead. Let's maybe move them up to 20. Twenty knots, twenty knots. I've been cutting in and out of this uh, video recording like crazy. But this is kind of what we want to see. Oh, that's not what we want to see. Okay. I was about to say, yeah, that's kind of what we want to see. Just a couple of destroyers that our light cruisers can easily make short work of. No, that is that is not what we're reporting. Um, we'll try to do some damage to these guys. I guess we're going to have to get people up to pretty quick speeds to avoid the potential battleships. I can't tell you my level of frustration that we don't have battleships where their battleships are, considering we have six battleships in this zone. I think they only have one. And yet it is their battleships and not ours, which are here. Okay, do not launch torpedoes. You guys can, because it'd be stupid for you to do it anyway, but we need to save those torpedoes for, I suppose we're going to see um, some bigger ships pretty soon. Unbelievable. Oh, holy crap, this luck. Now, what's the good news? We're very, very close to port. That's about it. <laughs> This has definitely not gone the way we wanted it to. I think this ship is going to get back safely. Um, but this is not a good start to the war. There was no surprise attack. I mean, we just have a whole a list, a litany even, of negatives holding us down right now. I'm not even sure what you're doing, why you chose to go off on your own. Just unnecessary, simply unnecessary. Uh, you know, we'll turn south and pursue. We have been hitting them, so, I mean, hey, this... I don't think we win on points. Um, I don't think we win on points even make it, if this ship makes it home, sinking both of their destroyers. We win from a strategic standpoint, because they have two less, and we're doing some good job flooding. I mean, flooding control should be pretty good. Mine, don't mind the fact that we're the Japanese, and that would not be historically accurate, but... We are doing a decent enough job controlling flooding, and that ship looks like we'll get home. And the Blackwater is taking a lot of hits. That's actually good, because I think the Scorpion is the one that was really in worse shape previously. Where are the alleged enemy capital ships? I think we'll still see them later. But for now... Oh yeah, okay. For now, we are not going to see them. Let's just do a drive-by buzzing. One damaged <laughs> medium bomber has crashed. Good job, Air Force. You big ding-dongs. There it is. Let's see if we can possibly get... Now, you don't have the restriction against launching torpedoes. I will. I think you actually launched a torpedo. Yep. I was going to say, we will put that back on. 
Of course, it's not going to be... Okay, we reattached. That's actually fine. I just don't want to take another torpedo hit. How did she disappear? <laughs> okay, that should be a kill. So it was a completely false report. And our ship did make it. That would have been horrifying if that had sunk, actually. Um, because we didn't give it time to go back home first. So this is actually a victory for us, I'm surprised. As I said, the strategic scenario is slightly in our favor. Okay, thought we might actually be getting close on that. Let's go to unrestricted. Um, we'll go to the build screen now. So the first one will be the namesake, and that's really all we can afford. I'm not even sure we can afford that, but we're going to build it anyway. Where there's a will, there's a way, people say, but I don't know if that's actually entirely true. I mean, I guess if we had a big enough will, we'd start scrapping other ships or, you know, doing weird things to get it going, but that doesn't make sense. It's not like a logical, <laughs> efficient decision-making process. So it's really, uh, it's really just about trying to, I don't know how we're going to do that. Cut down, how do we, I guess if we get this invasion to land, this will cut down by half. It'll give us 10 months to at least figure out what else we can do. <laughs> Let's go to unrestricted. I think our... I didn't see the last report, but I think we're good from a submarine standpoint. Convoy defense. Well, I'll accept it. One of these days, what would be nice is if we have an opportunity to use... <sighs> aircraft carriers. That's where we have the biggest advantage, but... It's the same two ships... I don't know, I mean, the Seno Yari was hit by a torpedo in his back pretty early. There's the spotting of an unknown ship. This will be interesting. We'll go up to 20 knots. Well, we sank two destroyers so far. The fact that we see these, these are... I'm sh just positive these are... Well, I'm not. I'm, I can't be, but I'm... As certain as I can be that these are not both destroyers. And I suspect that lead one is a destroyer where the trailing one might be a... It's actually turning slow enough. It might be a heavy cruiser. They don't have heavy cruisers, so I guess it could be a light. It is a light cruiser. Well, this is something I'd like to see. I'm going to try to get going in a straight line for a little bit so we can actually get up to speed. All the turning is going to make it difficult for us. And they are turning away. Okay, let's at least see... Wow, that was a... Whole damage with splinters, okay. Unfortunate first hit. This is 31 knots. It can outrun us. So we're at the mercy of the British whether or not they want to fight. The good news is, even if they don't fight, we win because our merchant ships won't be sunk. And another way of viewing this, of course, is uh, that if we can go far enough south... You can actually cut around them, and that's some good, those are, now we're starting to get some hits. Deploy smoke with their destroyers, because they're now the target. Yeah, so the idea here is just pursue nose on, so that we can hopefully close in and force her to turn towards our light cruisers. Although, if I'm not mistaken, she seems to be slowing pretty radically already. We're up to 25 knots. That's actually fantastic. We were able to get up to speed pretty quickly. Um, our destroyers are even landing some hits. I mean, you have to imagine that this cruiser feels very suppressed right now. It's got guns coming in from every which side. Six inch guns. They are landing. Uh, I will turn off torpedoes, but not because I have a strong reason to do so. I'm just worried that there might be other ships in the area. Of course, we are abandoning the transport, so hopefully that's not really the case. And I think the Karasvert here is is, is going to be succumbing to our gunfire. Five six-inch guns, four three-inch dual-purpose guns, heavy light, two-inch belt. I mean, she's lighter than us, 5,500 versus what, 6,000? 8,000, yeah. We have two 8,000s versus their 6,000. 
5,500, whatever. So this is not a fair fight. And this is where it's nice to have our destroyers in position to push her back. So at this point, I will allow torpedo launching. It's probably the perfect time to do it. Actually, I was surprised that we didn't launch there. Um, let's fire torpedoes out of arc. Okay, that's fair. She did turn back as well, so get these guys up to squad max. Now that it appears more likely this is the entirety of the enemy battle fleet. Going to turn in just to potentially... Oh dear. Spoke too soon, we did. Uh, that was a space bar, not a whatever you just did there. That's another light cruiser, but I doubt it. What could it be? This is a really, really interesting situation. Okay, unsighted is firing medium guns. That's a, these are two unsighted. Interesting. What the hell do we have here? Do they have a light cruiser scouting for a light cruiser? That's kind of interesting. Okay, I really want to capitalize on the carries for it and actually take her down, but boy, we got a predicament here. And we are still trailing her. I don't think her max speed is 31 knots anymore, but we're just going to try to make slow adjustments so we don't hopefully lose too much speed. And at this point, here we go. Squad max for you guys. We're going to move in and prepare to launch torpedoes. We will turn off the smoke screen for a moment. How is our speed doing here? We are at 29 knots, wow. I think, right? Yeah, current speed is 29 knots. We see them over here. Unfortunately, our merchant ships aren't getting any of our radio communications that they should not turn. They should, I mean, that they should turn away. Are we able to get this one? I'm still hopeful. Okay, we're landing the blows again. There's the other group. What the hell is going on? Okay, well, we've done a lot of good stuff so far. That would give us the advantage so far like moving this far into the battle. Just depends on what they actually have here and hopefully that they, they will be kind of like responding to this dire situation for one of their light cruisers. I mean, if I was the captain of the Carriersford, I would, I, I mean, I'd probably be saying, ah, oh, for what year is it? For king and country. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I might also be upset that a bunch of my buddies just sailed right by me, steamed right by me, left me to be eaten up by the Japanese cruiser. Avoiding torpedoes. Okay, well, we got lucky. We avoided their torpedoes. Wind is out of the west, so we are doing well on the east. I think we did shoo those other ships off. I think so. Speed must be lower now. 19, yeah. Those radical turns. That's, I mean, that'll, that'll do it for you. Okay, here we have it. So the other two have come back in, and they are opening fire. Calypso. Which is the same, I guess, as a Carysford. 
Yeah, it is reporting this to be the same. Six above water torpedo tubes, three on each side. They do have an aircraft. 30 mines, so it would be really nice to clear these guys out. All right, come this way. We now see where the enemy is. CA, that's not a CA. Pretty sure it's just another one. Um, let's not take erratic movement. Let's not make any kind of erratic movement. We need to preserve our speed, basically. Okay, now let's just make a straight line run. Hopefully these destroyers will meet the carries for it. We can pass them off. Pass the carries for it off to them. Still landing hits, even if it's only with the 4-inch guns. So I'm going to take that while we wait for destroyers to catch up. <clears throat> and they are, and this is where we go in. We're going to... Yeah, I'm going to take manual control of the torpedo launches just to prevent any kind of bad situation. Okay, wow, we're down on main armament. Here they come again. Alright, let's hold fire. Turn north. Slowing down the 20 knots. Destroyers are going to come in, make a pass. Let's have them actually hold fire. Well, that's not true. We don't want to hold fire because we want to make sure that we're suppressing the carries bird so she's not returning fire. She's already dead. Okay. Well, let's hold fire then. And honestly, I mean, we've already had a nice success. We just move back up here. Find the transports, and they are still heading this way. Damn. Of course they are. Well, I can't blame them. They'd be curious to see the naval battle. All right, here we go again. So main idea here is to protect the transports. It's not, I mean, that that's the noble thing to do, but it's to my advantage to do that. Um, I don't want to get mixed in, I don't want to be mixed in with those transports. I don't think it benefits us. So this is both of them. Why our transports aren't aren't turning around is another story. I guess we'll wait for them to make up their mind that they shouldn't be involved in this. I gotta get you into the action a little bit faster. But if we can push them off, just oh, you know what? I think we're close enough. <laughs> we gotta turn return fire. Oh my God! What what the heck? What happened? What happened? It was a pop-up. It's probably it was 20% ammo or something like that, but we took a lot of hits. Okay, we actually hit some destroyers. They're coming in close. What's our maximum speed? This is important. Still 29, and we're going 26. This is actually okay, then. We're probably okay. They're going to have a really hard time firing torpedoes at a ship moving away at 26 knots. We're laying down good fire, and that is actually another... It can't be, right? Another cruiser? I mean, we have done extremely well for ourselves. Where's the nearest port? Pretty far away, so we can't, we really shouldn't get ourselves in too much of a pickle here. I don't think that's an Arethusa. Arethusa. Okay, two hits on the Calypso. Both different ones, but I don't know. We'll take it anyway. They do or do not have their full broadside. They do. They do, which is all five, huh? Yep, I missed that one in front, but there it is. So yeah, if we can get them to angle a little bit more towards us, that would reduce their um, ability to fire at us pretty significantly. Or same applies to us, so it's kind of a, a weird game here. 
launching torpedoes, and that's that could be fun. And we're actually landing some good hits, at least this turn we did. I'm actually really happy that we all landed the hits on the same ship. The sooner we can discourage her from firing, the better. And she actually, we've knocked out one of her turrets. And the trailing ship has actually left the correct rate, uh, firing, I don't know, arc. That's the word. Let's see what this was. This was, this perforate uptakes. Okay, how are we doing then on speed? Max speed is down to 23. I think it's about time we deploy smoke. You guys are a free fire. Let's actually have you actively launch some torpedoes. I was hopeful. It's worth a shot, right? Now, are we still getting? No. Wait, are we out of ammunition? Nearly. Okay, look. How we drove them away from? No, not yet. But. Okay, we are landing still some good hits. They're with the 4-inch guns, but it's still something. High explosive. Ooh, wow. This thing really got it. This thing really got a number on us. It hit with two guns. On our destroyer, which is still in good shape. It's funny because I was just about to say, hey, let's go ahead and turn, let our destroyers go in. And turn our light cruisers out, but no, no, we don't, I don't think we'll be doing that. Yeah, the, that destroyer's got our number, unfortunately, but boy, we are returning fire well, and look at this. Oh, ho, 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 they went right through. It's a perfect hit, in my opinion. I'm um, still landing some hits. Six inch hit on this trailing one, that's good. I think that she's changed target over to our destroyers, so let's get those guys to deploy smoke. And again, we just want to keep dragging them away from our merchant ships, which we are doing so far. Okay, this is not too bad. One hit in exchange for three six-inch hits. And then a six-inch hit and a four-inch hit on the top. And this one has actually lost two of its turrets. With the flash fire situation for the British, I'm... Uh, I think that they should be counting their lucky stars. I'm a little surprised that we haven't gotten a flash fire, really. Another turn where we have just pummeled them. I've stuck with it here because I was a little nervous that we might lose the battle, lose uh, some light cruisers, but so far it's paid off. Okay, I don't know how the Ferrero is doing now, Peruru. Her max speed is still great, probably because we have um, the engine control stuff with her. Okay, they are turning away. Still are landing some hits, though. And even the front one has lost its forward turret. Ah, man, I mean, how big? These are, yeah, these are 1,500-ton destroyers. That's why they're able to absorb hits. You can see how it's, it really is important to be able to have your destroyers take a few hits. Or, I mean, we can see here how effective that can be. They appear to be turning away, though. And that's unfortunate because I don't think I can pursue. We're in too precarious of a situation. Um, although I think that they're going to get away and not sink. And I would... Yeah, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm not happy about that. So we're going to turn our destroyers in, see what we can do. Get these guys up to squad max. And let's get this, the light cruisers just to pursue nose on. We do have the super firing turrets. I don't know if we have any ammunition left. I don't think so. Hmm, Takashi turret destroyed. Alright, well we might have to just linger at the edge of vision. But this one's going slower. Yeah, we might have a situation, we might be 
or a situation might be setting up here where we can take out one of the slower ones with torpedoes is what I'm thinking. They're shifting a little bit further south than my current course, but that's fine. We do have a light cruiser shadowing us off to the west. It's already been 50 minutes in this episode. Oh, well, it was a little disjointed for the first 30 minutes, so at least we're getting some good, clean fun in at the end. Yeah, this has been, well, better than I was hoping. We're still hitting. Oh, we're actually hitting a oh, ruse launching torpedoes. Interesting. Okay, we're like full on launching torpedoes now. <laughs> As a lot of torpedoes, may I will be ever so happy even if we can hit the destroyers. Okay, she's gonna is she gonna hit, hit that breach perfectly. Not on my watch. I will tilt her back up. You know what? I'm I'm, I'm speaking of tilting. I'm probably tilting. This is a reckless decision, if there ever was one. Um, I'm going to stop torpedo launching. Good, we have one ship at least still with some torpedoes because we're going to want some for this other Calypso. That might get the job done. At least it's going to be harder for them to avoid all of it. Oh, that is unbelievable. I don't know if you saw that, but she split the difference between two torpedoes. Insane. Okay, let's not be too greedy. Let's just isolate the one that we have going slower and then get the kill and get out. So I want to just keep actually... Oh, okay. Well, you can also do that. Keep them from going in, but... Yeah, this will be... Who do we need? It's the... Takazi. So the Farouk... We just gotta detach her, I think, at this point. Um, what the hell are you doing? Okay, so we'll turn north with the Calypso. It's perfect. We did exactly what we wanted to, which is separate the two. I don't know what the Furu is doing. We want to get her just sail for Hanan. We know she's in a bad way. She's only making 10 knots. All right. The big question here is now going to be friendly ship in line of fire or not. No. Okay. Got her. Okay, good. Pull away. Should have been friendly ship in line of fire, honestly, but that's fine. Run! Okay, we're good. Flips is going down. We'll let these guys get the hell out of here. Is that a smoke screen I see? Very wise. Oops. Deploy smoke. Deploy smoke. Yeah, we're all good. And I'm assuming that the merchant ships are going to be able to get away now. But even if they can't, I don't care. I no longer care. We've done our job. Taken. We've um, already eliminated as many heavy or as many light cruisers as we have, and they still have two more. So now it's just, yeah, we're out of ammunition. We're going down to cruise speed because this is. I'm gonna say no because I don't want her to waste her time. Oh yeah. Turns out <laughs> they did find our merchant. Did I I are you you got to be kidding me? Why did the merchant ships like follow us? <sighs> so frustrating. 
Like, uh, yeah, yeah. out of everything they could have done, they w- it seems like there was an ascensions to them to intentionally try to do the wrong thing. I don't know how to describe it, but... Like, all they had to do was just not do... What the hell is going on? Oh my gosh, there's like real enemy ships here. So while we were off chasing these light cruisers, it turns out maybe there were bigger ships. Now, what's my squad max? Ooh. No, that's... That's a no-no. You're going to get our destroyers to figure this out. But I do want to go back in and see, because what the hell's going on here? Just have my light cruisers kind of... Okay, what the hell's going on? They only took five inch gunfire, so that's hopefully just destroyers. I mean, if she was hit by a torpedo, it had to be from a destroyer, right? We have no main ammunition left on these light cruisers, but yet here we are. Only to come back for them to have left. Okay, so we did lose, we only lost one Oh yeah, we lost the one destroyer, sadly, but we only lost one transport, even though, oh, it was the same transport hit with two torpedoes, I see. And they lost two light cruisers, obviously a huge victory advantage to me, strategic advantage hugely to me, blah, blah, blah. Good stuff. So, full hour-long episode. Well, isn't that exciting? We'll take it. A -R -K. Okay, nice, but I don't know if we we're interested by, well, maybe. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Everything but toughness, but we'll take it. It actually carries a bomb. I don't. That, that could be. That could be useful. And invasion delayed still. Okay. Wow. Nine enemy ships sunk. Nine merchants sunk. One for us. Two submarines lost to their one. Okay, that's fair enough. Well, let's bring this to a close before we do breach the 60-minute mark. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. And until the next one, stay safe and take care.